And also, uh, we got a Karen McCarthy who listens to us in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, on the iHeartRadio app. We appreciate that. And uh, you can check us out live on our YouTube channel right now. We're live on YouTube. If you just go to monsters.fm, you can click right through to our YouTube channel. It is awesome. What's up, guys? I'm Russ Rollins, along with Angel and Carlos and Jeff Howells here today. Uh, and along with uh, with them, this is, uh, this is really special. This is kind of cool. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, Athena Finger. Now, Athena Finger, her grandfather is Bill Finger. And I, I watched the documentary. I, you know, I know everything about this, but a lot of people still are not aware that your grandfather actually helped to and probably did a lot more than Bob Kane when it came to inventing what is one of my, I mean, I got the, I got the Batman, uh, you know, like. I, oh, nice. Ma- matter of fact, let me show you this. Let me show you this right here. Just show you. When I was, that's me as a little, a little knucklehead. Oh. With my ba- that's so cute. With, with my, I love this shirt. And I got my Batman t-shirt on. Been a Batman fan forever. And uh, so you, growing up, your grandfather helped to invent Batman, but never really got the credit. Is that correct? That is correct. So now, okay, when you were a kid, how much of this did you know about it? Did, did your grandfather talk about it at all? Well, I never got to meet him. Unfortunately, he passed away before I was even like in a concept. Oh, uh, <laughs> really? Okay, so so you never met, met your grandfather, no. but you but uh, did your parents tell you? Hey, guess what? Your your grandfather invented, you know. Well, my dad was very proud of his father, so of course he spoke about it. Um, you know, he always would tell me little stories. I mean, it was a long time ago, so I don't remember very much. But um, he would tell me, you know, that he would watch his dad type all the time and he would read some of the scripts that his dad would be working on he did a lot of research they would go to the movies all the time and museums and things like that so he was really proud of what his father accomplished even though he didn't get the credit yeah um and he fought for his father for a long time um after bill passed away to to try to get his name attached to the Batman name. Yes, when you were a kid, was there any was there any time where you're like, oh, I don't know if I really believe this. They they never really they never give my grandfather any credit. I mean, d- did you doubt it at any time in your life? I never doubted it. Why would my father lie to me? You right. Know? Um, I, I mean, other my, people I my outside of <laughs> my family would question it, of course, because you know, back in the '80s, we didn't have all the free information that we have now easily accessible. I mean, right. it was th- out there, but it was a very small population of people that actually knew the truth about how it was created and who was involved in the whole process. So you know, tell tell us the story, because everybody pretty much who knows about Batman, it's always been Bob Kane. And Bob Kane created Batman after Superman, uh, allegedly. But but y- your dad, was your dad there with him? Like, how did, how did the whole thing start? Okay, well, um, it was in response to the Superman character. And so... Bob at the time had already had his own studio. And so he went to National and was like, I'll come up with a character. You know, we wanted to know how much the Superman boys were making. It was all about money and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. Sure. But, um, so Bob went home. Um, Bill had already been working with him on some other s- stories for different scripts. So they started discussing this new character that Bob wanted to create. Right. Um, and so he really valued Bill's opinion. He knew he was a very... Um, visual writer and he was very passionate about his art right so he brought his initial concept which is not what we see today um, yeah, because initially correct me if I'm wrong but initially uh, Bob Kane had him in a red costume correct yes and uh, I think the, the 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 cowl was a little bit different right it was like stiff wings yeah 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 um, he had oh. blonde hair he had the little domino mask yes he had the little black panties on like he didn't look like anything that we have now and right. so your and so your grandfather is the one that kind of changed it to the iconic character well, it, closer to what we know now right well yeah I mean being a writer playing on the word bat, you got to make them look a little more like a bat, not bright red that you can see in the night. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, you know, he he went with that and said, well, maybe you should do a darker scheme and instead of this, change to a cowl and instead of the stiff wings, give him a cape. Like, he started to form it into something that's more mysterious and, and that's going to actually scare people instead of being like, ha, ha, ha. Right. You're in bravery, <laughs> leotard. <laughs> So no, now how did okay? So your 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 grandfather, you know, kind of guided him that way. How did it get to the point where your uh, Bob Kane got all the credit and all the mention, and your your grandfather got none? Well, I mean, unfortunately, at the time, that was 
kind of the norm. One name got attached to the title, and then, yes, there was a group of people that worked on it behind the scenes. Um, so, I mean, my grandfather kind of understood that. He had already been a ghostwriter for Bob, so it kind of just went in line. I mean, yes, it should have been the two names, just like Siegel and Schuster, yeah. and, and share all of that, but unfortunately... And Siegel and Schuster, that was Superman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was Superman. And at that time, that was the big, you know, Superman was the big deal. Well, and, he was. He was the first, like, real superhero character that had come out into the pop culture of the time. And, and, and Batman was an answer to that to try to, you know, kind of kind of yeah, be on that same right. plane. Yes. And, and so, okay, so as the character starts taking off, uh, your grandfather, Bill, Bill Finger, he stays on with Bob Kane and continues to write? Or was that just in the beginning? Um, he eventually left Bob Kane's studio and... Um, was hired directly by National. DC. Oh, so they hired him, and so he continued to write stories for Batman. Yes, and then and then correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, but your your dad is one. I mean, your grandfather came up with the Joker. With uh, like, how, how many of the characters did your grandfather come up uh, with? Well, he came up with most of everything that we originally started with. Um, the Joker character, okay, you bring him up first because he's the most popular, of course. Of but, course, yeah. But that really, okay, so everyone claims that they did it, but really it was a collaboration between Bob, Bill, and Jerry Robinson. Oh, three uh, people, yeah. Right. I mean, they were the ones that were really you know, making the stories happen at the time. Yeah. So they really knew that they had to come up with a really dynamic villain for Batman to go against right. other than just, you know, mobsters. <laughs> yes, because originally that's what it was. It was just against the mobsters, yeah. Right, well, I mean, again, it goes with the times. We're talking the 30s. So yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on with gangsters and the mafia at that time, so that's pretty much what they were pulling from. Yeah. What, what, what is it that you've learned about your grandfather that he created or that he had to do with that, that surprises you or that you're the most proud of? What, what part of it that most people don't know uh, that, that, that you like to tell the story about? Oh, um, I mean, he just did so much. He didn't just write for comics. He yeah. was really, you know, he was a pioneer for writers that wanted to do more than just one pigeonholed style. Yeah. He wrote for comics. He wrote for TV. He wrote for radio. He wrote movies. He wrote for the Army. He wrote for anyone and anyone who would give him a writing job. Really? I mean, that's really what he did. I mean, he wasn't. Wealthy, he was unknown, he was broke most of the time. Isn't that crazy to think? Because like, this, this character, Batman, I mean, there are millions and millions and millions of dollars yeah. attached to it. And and your grandfather... Uh, and, you, and you know what? It never would, Batman would have never been big if he didn't do the cape thing instead of the fixed wing. Oh, of course. Because, I mean, it would be like, uh, I'll get you Riddler if I could just get through this doorway. Exactly. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> So, uh, so you're, uh, so he, okay. How, when your uh, grandfather passed, was he upset about the fact that he didn't get credit for this uh, iconic character? Um, well, I know that it bothered him. I mean, back in the '60s, he was interviewed um, to get the real story um, by Jerry Bales, and so that was like the first time that he really got to voice his side of it um, publicly. Mm -hmm. um, even though it wasn't very public. <laughs> um, but he got to, you know, really share his side of the story and not what Bob Kane had betrayed for so many years, that he was the only man that created all of this. He was the only one that wrote it. He was the only one that drew it, yeah. colored it, and did everything himself. That sucks, yeah. You know? Um, but again, that goes into what Bob Kane was looking for. He wasn't really looking for the art. He was looking for the notoriety, the fame, the money. And he, and he had it. I mean, uh, now, uh, this, I, I believe it was like last year or two years ago, was the very first time on the TV show Gotham where it says Batman created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Was that a big deal for you and your family? Okay, well, I have to correct there for a second because they don't use the word and. Oh, they don't? No. What do they, they say? They use the word with. With now, oh, like you just did, you kind of skipped over and said, and anyways, um, the language came down to you know, what can we get away with because we got to kind of like be kosher with whatever contract they have with the Kane family, uh huh. So that's why they use that particular language. Well, you know what, and it's something I didn't even you don't even notice nor well, think of it, and it's just one word, but it meant a big deal to the lawyers, right? Of course, well, yeah. I mean, yes, they don't want to be sued, so sure. <laughs> 
So it's Bob Kane <laughs> with Bill Finger. Yes. Yeah. Now, is that the way if in in all future movies and future comic books and things like that? Will will that Forever be? Forever and ever and ever. Yes. Uh, well, that's a that's a pretty good little victory. But but then no money attached to that though, right? Um. Well, I mean, I can't really talk about all of the details, but I mean. I get to do enjoy my life a little more. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you write or anything? Do you uh, are you a writer as well? No, I don't like words. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're on the right show. You're on the perfect show. I don't like words. No, actually, I'm we a math professor. Ones. I like numbers. So. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I teach math at a local college in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, um, ironic. But really, my passion is painting. Oh, nice. So, okay, so, so I mean, has it, it sunk into you, basically, that, you know, these these things now make, I mean, billions of dollars. These comic yeah. book characters make billions of dollars, and Batman is kind of like modern-day mythology now, that, that, I mean, the entire world knows a character that your grandfather helped to uh, to create. That's kind of a, that's kind of a big deal, isn't it? It's massive. Yeah. <laughs> um, I joke with my students all the time that I really do have two separate lives. I have my like my regular life where I go to class and I teach math. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have my Batman world, which is this really insane but awesome experience every time I interact with the fans or do an event or any of those things because people really are passionate about this character. It really oh my hits God. a oh my core. God. For so many. And so once people realized that I, one, existed, and two, that they could find me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And what would you think your your grandfather would think about? Because here's what happens. You create a character, and then other writers start, you know, adding things to it and maybe making it and growing it into something that it, initially it wasn't. Now, you know, Batman's this brooding uh, guy who has uh, psychological problems because of his, uh, you know, his uh, parents, parents were shot. Being from killed. Him. And it, originally that really wasn't even written in there, uh, but now it's grown to that and that's part of the mythology do you think your grandfather would like where the character has gone and grown to or or not um i would like to think he does yeah i mean you always want to see something grow and and change and and still be something that's relevant to the times sure so um you know since they did bring batman back to the darker side Mm -hmm. i think it just kind of is logical that they kind of took it that way and that he did have like a psychosis and like a mental break and everything sure um you know it's because originally like batman never killed anybody and he never would use guns and right. all this and then now it's it's well as he's gotten older he's like uh, drinking and he's alcoholic yeah. <laughs> and he's shooting people and, yeah. and, and I'm, just cannons. I'm just yeah cannon on, on the batmobile and stuff i'm wondering if your if your grandfather would say okay it's a natural progression of things or if he'd be like no that's not the way it's supposed to be that's only one title, though. I mean, there's how many different Batman storylines out there? Yes, there are a bunch of different worlds, yeah. So, I mean, I think that he would probably like one more than the other, but, I mean, I'm sure he would get a kick out of how his character has morphed into this, I don't know what you would call it at this point. Yeah, it's mythology. <laughs> I mean, it's it a, a huge, I mean, a I mean bigger I think than it's life. a little more than that at this point because some mythologies are not even known around the world, but right. Batman is. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff Howe, question for Athena Finger. She's going to be at the, uh, it's the Science Center, uh, and that's uh, what, on the June the, the 16th? It's Saturday, yeah. Saturday, yeah. Awesome. Um, so you like numbers. Yes. And you love to paint. Yes. You ever paint by numbers? <laughs> when I was a kid. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to do that joke. I, just, <laughs> I was dying the whole time. That's awesome. Thank, thank you. you. So, thank you for thinking it's awesome. So Nobody it, else does. When you go, when you go oh, to uh, the convention, <laughs> do you go to the conventions and sign uh, things or no? Oh, yeah. I try to um, go to as many as I can. Yeah. Um, I've been a little more active in the last year um, with the paintings and stuff. It gives me a little more incentive to get out there. Um, but, you know, I really love meeting the fans and talking to them and hearing their stories or letting them ask their questions or whatever it is. Because without the fans, I wouldn't have this great experience with Batman that I have now. Right. So, uh, Angel, I, w- w- if they want to get tickets, how do they get tickets for the Orlando Science Center? All right, so Orlando Science Center is this weekend. It's uh, They're turning kids' town into Super Metropolis for Superhero Week. And you go to OrlandoScienceCenter.org. You can purchase tickets there, or you can uh, walk up to the door and purchase them. Uh, that's The events that are going down Saturday is the 
excuse me, the Q&A with uh, Athena from 11 thir- uh, starts at 1130. You're also going to have uh, Dorian Alberti out there with the Iron Man suit that he built himself, available, Ooh, for, uh, available for pictures. And then we're going to have other superheroes like Aquaman and The Flash bouncing around the Orlando Science Center. Very nice. Thank you guys so much for coming in, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. All right, very good. It's uh, the Orlando Science Center this weekend. All right, you're listening to the Monster of the Morning. Real Radio is the Jim Colbert Show. On the next Jim Colbert Show, we're going to talk about Tim Draper, a billionaire that's entered.